Okay, is this a jackhammer massacre or a motherfucking invasion? guys welcome to 31 days of horror i am morgan film fan let's jump into some scares jackhammer massacre was released in 2004 and directed by a guy named joe castro now apparently this is the same guy that did all the special effects and makeup in this film and uh from what i'm getting i think this guy is definitely involved in the practical effects section of uh filmmaking because it really does show in this film this is a micro budget film and um I'm not sure if uh, Joe Castro wrote it, but he certainly directed it, and it says on the credits that he was involved with all the practicals, like I said. And, uh, man, does he showcase his talent in this film? What we have going on here is this film starts basically in the middle of the film, where we have this guy, this unknown guy, pull up to a uh, warehouse of some sort, and when he gets inside, this is this guy lying on the on the ground. He seems like he's tweaking on something. He seems like he's on something. He seems like he's in a really bit of a rough spot. Now, this guy basically uh, starts harassing him for some money. Apparently, this guy owes this dude who drove up to this warehouse some money, and they start getting into some kind of an argument, and then uh, he ends up knocking the guy out, the guy who was tweaking, and then he ends up filling this syringe with what he claims to be crystal meth, heroin, LSD, pretty much every high hard drug on the market and injects this guy with it. Obviously the guy who is owed money is looking to kill this guy, but uh, little does he know that this drug is not going to stop this man's heart, but uh, turn him into basically a uh, unstoppable psychopath killing machine, <laughs> essentially. So after this scenario, we flash back to one year previous and we start to the film starts to develop in what basically led to that moment. So you have this guy named Jack, who was the guy tweaking on the floor, and you have this other guy named Matt, who is a separate guy from this guy introduced in the beginning. And these two guys, Jack and Matt, uh, basically like to get really fucked up after work. And uh, Jack works as a, at a, as a security guard for this uh, basically warehouse that sells certain electrical tools, jackhammers being one of them and he's security for this place and it's very strange because the way they present jack he certainly doesn't look like a security guard he looked more like an office cubicle kind of worker he had the the khakis and the button-up shirt and the sunglasses and he looks very kind of 90210 bully it's very strange but he goes to buy some drugs with this guy named Matt and they tweak it out and then Matt ends up having an overdose and he basically goes into a seizure and dies immediately. And Matt through, or sorry, Jack throughout the entire, through the rest of the film basically gets really hooked on this drug that he's taking. They call it glass. I'm assuming it's some type of heroin or something else. And he gets very hooked on this uh, drug to the point where he basically turns into a psychotic um, Ted Bundy acting kind of character. He's this fairly normal, fairly good looking guy that uh, would normally seem like your everyday blue collar worker, but because he's so hooked on this drug, he transforms into this absolute psychopath that they do his makeup really well when it comes to the eyeliner and they really make him look drugged out. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this review about the practical effects, man, they are wild. The film opens up with one kill when the guy gets injected in the neck and he kills the guy at the beginning of the film, whose name is Roger, by the way, we find out. He basically smashes Roger's face in with a jackhammer and the way the face, cr face crushes, it looks like, you know, it just basically smashes right in and it looks absolutely fantastic. In one scene, he's injecting himself into his elbow pretty much and it's all infected and it looks disgusting. It's totally bulging up and he's trying to like get in between and you can see pus leaking out of it and everything. The practical effects are wild and very disgusting and like I said, 
I can tell this guy used this film and utilized this film to showcase and display his talents with the practical effects. This film is loaded with them. When it comes to the kills, oh baby, this is what I love. Now, like I said, this film is micro budget and I think its weakest link certainly is in the directing. Some of the way the plot moved and some of the writing and just the way scenes would play out one after the other left me a little confused. Now, from the sense that I get with it, this Jack guy, like I said, he's so hooked on drugs that he's basically calling everybody to uh, give him money or, or finding any way to kind of buy these drugs. He works at this uh, warehouse where they sell all these tools, and he was recently fired for obvious reasons. And when his boss comes in, claiming that he already sold the shop and that he's letting the security guard go. He basically kills his boss. And then we have the new owners, which is these two guys come into the warehouse and then they get picked off. And then we have this, what I assume to be a cleanup brigade to basically unload everything and throw everything into the trash because this business is shutting down. And there's a group of this cleanup brigade. And basically the third act is Jack, uh, essentially killing everybody off one by one. So there's a lot of brutality in this film, and that's the best part of it, is is what they do with the practical effects, and how menacing this guy is, and how crazy he is, because he starts to get 100% delusional, and he starts to believe that things are being bugged, everybody's in on him, his sister has some conspiracy towards him, uh, he's hearing stuff on, you know, the TV and radios and stuff like that. So he goes into full conspiracy mode and he starts to go absolutely psychotically insane. And because of the drugs, he's not quite invincible, but he's certainly um, very susceptible to not feeling pain. Let's just put it that way. The acting is tremendously hokey. I didn't see anybody that I would necessarily say stands out as a professional actor. Maybe they are, I'm not quite sure. However, like I said, the weakest links would be in the direction, a little bit on the writing, and the whole talent on screen. The positives would be all in the practical effects and gore aspects. This is a bloodbath and this film knows how to have a blast with it. I had a blast with this movie. I loved everything about the mayhem of it. Our main guy, Jack, really does a good job selling himself as a complete psychopath. Now, I know I just finished talking about the acting in this film about 30 seconds ago, and I still stand by that, but I will say that Jack does know how to play tweaked out psychopath very, very well, the actor who plays him, I mean. And I must say, I just loved the kills, and the cinematography, like I said, is held back a little bit, a little bit by the budget, by the equipment. Everything definitely feels TV movie. If a TV movie was allowed to have plenty of tits, plenty of kills, and plenty of F words, of course. But you can tell that there's that student film quality. And actually, I could say that the charm of this movie probably is a little bit enhanced too because of that student film look. This is the kind of film where if I'm not a practical effects guy, I could, when I watch these practical effects, there is no way I have the talent to create some stuff like this and make them look that beautiful and that uh, disgusting, kind of. But if I had somebody working with me who was taking care of all the practical effects, this is the type of turn-your-brain-off, wacky, serial killer fun movie that I would want to create. Because it's all about that. It's all about not taking itself seriously. It's all about following this whack job just killing a bunch of people, massacring a bunch of people with a jackhammer, which is his main weapon. I mean, there's some other ways he decides to uh, end people's lives, but of course it's jackhammer massacre, so that's the biggest, most popular weapon that he uses. And uh, it's wild. It's a great time. I had a blast with it, and I really enjoyed myself with it. So much so that I actually went all the way up to a two and a half out of five, being that yesterday's film just didn't work so much for me. This one, even though it had pretty much the same look and the same budget, this one knows how to utilize that kind of budget and that kind of B-movie style to my liking. So I like this one a lot. Not perfect, certainly has its flaws, but what movie is perfect? All a film needs to do is entertain me. I've said that a hundred times. 
and this one did just that. So that is day seven of 31 Days of Horror. Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you'd like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews. I will be back with more soon, so stay tuned for those. Check out what's on the channel already. Stay tuned for what's coming. And tomorrow, we go straight back to high school. Cheers, guys.